we get into our next round of uh, conference tournament droughts. Here's what it looks like when we take a look at the 1990s. Nebraska has not won a conference title since 1999. That was in the Big 12. Texas A&M has not won a conference title since 1998. That was in the Big 12. Tennessee, <clears throat> when we say it feels like 98, well, that's because it's been since 1998. No recruits were alive when Tennessee last won a Southeastern Conference Championship. Was Jordan oh. alive when Tennessee last won a Southeastern Conference Championship? <laughs> yes, right? I don't know. Jordan, can we get yeah. thumbs up? I mean, I, I'm I'm yeah. Jordan's direct report, so I'm pretty sure he was he was born, but like I don't think he was super old. Okay. Um Tennessee I gotta pull up his personnel file here and find find the birth date. UCLA <laughs> 19 Jordan was four years old. Okay. UCLA won the Pac 10 title in nineteen ninety eight. Virginia in nineteen ninety five. That was a co championship, right, Danny? Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, Do you have anything no. to do with that? Stop it. <laughs> Virginia, uh, Texas, Texas 67 times in that game. Texas Tech in 1994, Arizona in 1993. Now, things that stand out to me just sort of off the cuff is that Nebraska and Texas A&M, the inability to get another one even before they left their conference really speaks to what Oklahoma was able to do in terms of rolling Big 12 title after Big 12 title after Big 12 title. Like, that's not even a Texas thing. In Texas, we will be getting to you before we get out of here. That Also, for the Pac-10, you know, you get your Arizona, your UCLA in there. Uh, there was a big shift. Uh, Oregon State's coming up in a little bit. They were in 2000. We see a big shift in terms of the power out west that's going to happen right when we get to the turn of the century. Uh, what stands out here as a surprise and or a team that you think is close to snapping it? I mean, I, I think the biggest surprise for me is the most obvious one. It's Nebraska, not winning one since 1999. But you mentioned like Texas A&M won one in 98. Nebraska won one in 99. They're both in the Big 12. Do you know what happened in 1999? Bob Stoops got hired. Exactly. And then it was over. So just it's. But still. Texas A&M joined the SEC in what, 2010? Nebraska joined the Big Ten in 2010. So it's not like it was a couple years after that they left and they joined these new conferences. They had over a decade of chances, but I still think Nebraska is more surprising simply because while A&M did win it in 98, historically Nebraska was the more powerful program in that conference. And they'd been in the SWC before that. So I just... I think Nebraska is the kind of too obvious choice here because as good as Texas A&M has been, spent a lot of time in the SEC, hard to win. Tennessee has been in the SEC the entire time, very hard to win that conference. And then you talk about like UCLA. It's always been a good but not great program, so it's not somebody you consider like a perennial Pac-12 power. So I, I, I think it's got to be the Cornhuskers. I think Nebraska and Tennessee, the thing that sticks out to me with those two programs specifically is the inability to replace legendary coaches. Mm. you know and then like you set that standard so then you want it and you expect to re maintain that standard and then you get impatient and then you start firing and you go through this cycle of coaches that you continually miss on and it makes the job that much harder on the next coach you know like i think that's been a massive issue for those two programs i i, I guess i'll take texas a&m here i mean I, I feel like they've had some really good seasons since that last title by the way, a name from the past. Do you guys remember Jamar Toombs? I've got a lot of names in my no, brain. Now. I can't I don't. say. That's, this, that's... I don't know what they listed him at, like height and weight wise. But I remember, like, this is one of the cool things that college football used to be before all the games were on TV every single week, or maybe because I was like, twelve years old. Uh, like you would see these guys for the first time, and he played in that that very famous Mississippi State Texas A&M like snow uh, snow game in Shreveport. This guy's got to be like a two hundred sixty pound running back, and that they were just having a ton of fun with him. Just, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you got A and M fans in the chat. Just remind me oh, what they listed. Oh, the big at. fat guy. Yes, yeah. Okay, they listed him at <laughs> six foot one, two fifty five, and it was yes. just given the this was like Ron Dane if you did the creative player thing, like bigger. Um, and, and that was that was pretty fun. I feel like A and M because of the quality of player you can get in that state, and because they. Like they have had some guys who were successful, you know. Francione did a nice job there, right, for a little while. And, and like they've, I, I feel like they've had dudes who were okay, and they just 
to, to not win since then, I guess, is, is somewhat surprising. I, UCLA as well, to me, uh, stands out a little bit because they have had some really good teams. They just couldn't get over the hump. But it's not like uh, it's not like USC was was great in the 90s. Um, obviously, USC in the 2000s and then Oregon really started to come up there mm-hmm. in the late 90s. So that, that very much explains why, uh, why, why they haven't won it. Virginia just not uh, really surprising. Me. Yeah, like UCLA is a program that, and this is one of the things that makes the impending move to the Big Ten kind of interesting, is that UCLA, even under you know Jim Moore Jr., was playing for Pac-12 championships once they introduced the Pac-12 title game, wasn't able to get it done, but they were right there. I don't look at UCLA as a program that is chasing national championships. I don't think UCLA fans would even say that they're chasing national championships. But in the Pac-10, Pac-12, you could at least look at yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, you know, we can do this. And then you get to the Big Ten, and you know, this is going to be a, a big jump in competition. And I'm not even sure if you can even look yourself in the mirror and be like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go and win the Big Ten. It'll be a very um, interesting change for UCLA. I want... I want to start getting into just throwing throwing some matchups out here because this is going to get a little tasty. Nebraska or Texas A&M, who wins a conference championship next? Texas A&M, they're recruiting at a yeah. better level than Nebraska right now. I think it's Texas A&M as well. Um, okay. Mm, yeah, and, and we think their, their every year schedule is going to be Texas – Probably not Alabama, maybe LSU. I think it's AM. Because you do know that even the um the nineteen even the nineteen ninety-eight title snapped a little bit of a drought. Uh no, they were in nineteen ninety-three. So RC Slocum won in ninety-one, ninety-two, and ninety-three. Then they went a couple years without it. And the 91, 92, and 93 were Southwest Conference. Only one Big 12 title during Texas A&M's time. Nebraska. Is it, do you think it will come under the tenure of Jimbo Fisher and or Matt Rule? Like, Do you think that the current sitting head coaches of both programs will be able to lead their teams to conference championships? I'll say yes, and I'll say it's Jimbo. I'm on the I'm on the Tex, Tex A&M recruiting train too. Can they get Jamar yeah. Toombs in the backfield? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, put that picture up there. Just look at yes! that. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube.com slash cover three delivers for those who hang out with us, watch live, or come back and rewatch it because uh that's that's that is amazing stuff. They just don't now, make like they used to, fellas. No uh, draft tracker. Now I know A and M listed him at two fifty five. Draft Tracker, which is, a, which is an old ESPN page, does not agree that he's six one two fifty five. They list him at six foot even two eighty one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that looks more uh, like it. Mm-hmm. That looks okay. kind of like my guy Pooh Bear. <laughs> let's let's pass Pooh Bear Williams, Clarence Williams of Florida State. He was mm-hmm. a big fullback that was maybe three hundred. He was. We we would yell Pooh Bear instead. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what about a quick follow from this era? So we said Nebraska, Texas A and M. It was pretty much Texas A and M across the board. Texas A and M, Tennessee. Who wins a conference championship next? Both last one in 1998. Texas A and M. I mean, I feel like Tennessee's in better position than Nebraska. So if I'm going to pick Texas A and M to beat Nebraska, there, I got to. Uh, I. T- I need Tennessee, to see Tennessee. No, I don't. I mean, once they get rid of the divisions, it's going to be so much harder of a path for Tennessee. They're going to dodge Georgia. They don't have to play Georgia every year. Like Tennessee's Tennessee's division is going to be Tennessee's schedule is getting easier. Yeah, but like Tennessee is one Georgia upset loss away from winning the division. You know what I mean? So it's now they've got to get through Alabama. Like if Georgia has a down year, awesome. Now you just got to get through Alabama and LSU too. You know what I mean? So it's. I, I need to see more than one good season from Tennessee before. I, I know Texas A&M hasn't broken through yet, but Texas A&M has had seasons like Tennessee just had in recent years where they've lost a couple games, but they got really close. They finished fifth in the COVID year. They were just outside the playoff, just like Tennessee. So I would go Aggies. 
I'm going to go Tennessee, and I really don't think that there is some big edge here on either side. Like, I, I'd be surprised. I, I wouldn't put a lot of money on that. I, I really kind of doubt Tom would put a bunch on A&M winning for Tennessee. Life savings. Plus, like, how many of us are even going to be working here by the time either of these teams win, win a conference <laughs> title next? Like, do we think this happens in the next four or five years? Because I, I, I don't. I, I think that Tennessee is closer than Texas A&M, and I could see Tennessee winning a conference championship in the next five years. God, you guys I don't, are so scared of Jordan. I'm listen. Yeah. I, Texas A&M is bad as they were this year. They still beat LSU. They still <laughs> almost beat Alabama. Like, and it was a horrible year for them. I just think there's a lot of talent on that roster. I think it's yeah, a little closer. That Tennessee Yelp actually did beat Alabama, by the way. Yeah. Now I'm really stuck up Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> is it Jordan's birthday? What the hell are we doing? <laughs> Part of this too, just as like recruiting nerd, I, there's some chance that Nico is like just really that guy, and that that gives them a nice window in that offense to be. And the successful. offense, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. The defense, defense, defense dunk. It's hard to be elite with a crappy defense. Do we think Falls Fan ninety eight in the chat is Jordan? Like is I Jordan, think it is. Is I he swear driving I one, one computer here and like like the other laptop yeah. over there? Or it isn't, but I think it is. Okay. I, Tennessee. Yale practice is weird. And Nebraska was in that one or no? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Nebraska was in that conversation or no? Do you, just I, against a and Just okay. against A&M. Do you want to do Nebraska, Tennessee? Yes. Tennessee. Tennessee. Nebraska? Danny? I don't think it's that crazy, and I think it's probably easier in the Big Ten, isn't it? No. They're not adding Oklahoma and Texas. Nebraska has not found anything about the Big Ten to be easy. Well, True. like Nebraska doesn't get to play with Tennessee or A&M's talent level in the Big Ten, right? Like we can say that the Big Ten is easier, and I, I think it is, but that like they don't get to use those teams' talent that we were just talking about. They have to use Nebraska's talent, which is not very good. 